Philosophy of Hinduism by Baba Sahib Ambedkar Introduction Philosophy of Hinduism 1. Part 7 The religious revolution which marks off antique society from modern society is far greater than the religious revolution which divides society which is savage and civilized. Its dimensions will be obvious from the differences it has brought about in the conceptions regarding the relations between God, society and man. The first point of difference relates to the composition of society. Every human being, without choice on his own part, but simply in virtue of his birth and upbringing, becomes a member of what we call a natural society. He belongs that it is to a certain family and to a certain nation. This membership lays upon him definite obligations and duties which he is called upon to fulfill as a matter of course and on pain of social penalties and disabilities while at the same time it confirms upon him certain social rights and advantages. In this respect, the ancient and modern worlds are alike, but in the words of Professor Smith, there is this important difference, the tribal or national societies of the ancient world were not strictly natural in the modern sense of the word, for the gods had their part and the place in them equally with men. The circle into which a man was born was not simply a group of kinsfolk and fellow citizens, but embraced also certain divine beings, the gods of the family and of the state, which to the ancient mind were as much as a part of the particular community which which they stood connected as a human member of the social circle. The relation between the gods of antiquity and their worshippers was expressed in the language of human relationship, and this language was not taken in a figurative sense, but with strict literary. If a god was spoken of as father and his worshippers as his offspring, the meaning was that the worshippers were literally of his stock that he and they made up one natural family with reciprocal family duties to one another. Or again, if the god was addressed as king, the worshippers called themselves his servants. They meant that the supreme guidance of the state was actually in his hands, and accordingly the organization of the state included provision for consulting his will and obtaining his direction in all weighty matters, also provision for approaching him as king with due homage and tribute. Thus, a man was born into a fixed relation to certain gods as surely as he was born into relation to his fellow men and his religion, that is, the part of conduct which was determined by his relation to the gods was simply one side of the general scheme of conduct prescribed for him by his position as a member of society. There was no separation between the spheres of religion and of ordinary life. Every social act had a reference to the gods as well as to the men, for the social body was not made up of men only, but of gods and men. Thus, in ancient society, men and their gods formed a social and political as well as a religious whole. The religion was founded on kinship between the god and his worshippers. Modern society has eliminated god from its composition. It consists of men only. The End